Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jaru Jaru J, and welcome to another episode of Feats IRL, the show where I use real life science and math to figure out just how impressive the feats of fictional characters really are. Full disclosure, I've been procrastinating with making this video because I ran out of passion for this particular feat. I want to move on to a new project, so if this video has super basic editing and commentary, know that it's because I just wanted it over with. Let's get started. I wanted to figure out how strong Tifa Lockhart was, so I started looking at her feats of strength. The first problem I faced was that her most impressive feats occur during her limit breaks, and Tifa becomes much stronger than she normally is during those limit breaks. However, it turns out this isn't a major issue due to how limit breaks work. You see, limit break damage scales off of the character's normal damage. Specifically, they always deal multiple of their normal damage. For example, Tifa's Meteor Strike limit always deals 1.875 times the damage of one of Tifa's normal attacks, meaning that if we figure out how strong she is while using this limit, and divide it by 1.875, we'll know exactly how strong she is in her base form. Now the most impressive feat of strength I could find for Tifa comes from when she uses this Meteor Strike limit to pick up and throw the giant monster known as the Diamond Weapon. There are a variety of reasons for why I picked the Diamond Weapon over the other monsters Tifa uses this limit on, but I'll save my breath and just put the reasons on screen. Feel free to pause if you want to read them. Now the first hurdle in figuring out the Diamond Weapon's weight was figuring out which version to measure. You see, there's three vastly different sizes that we see the Diamond Weapon have. There's the Diamond Weapon you see in the battle screen, there's the Diamond Weapon you see on the overworld map, and the Diamond Weapon you see in the cutscenes. Between these, I went with the cutscene version because the other two versions have had their sizes altered for the sake of gameplay, while the cutscene Diamond Weapon is just meant to be an accurate representation of the monster. With that decided, I then set out to measure how big the Diamond Weapon is in in these cutscenes. To do that, I compared the monster to this laser that was fired at it. This laser was fired from this cannon, so in order to measure the cannon, I went into a different cutscene from Final Fantasy VII Advent Core, in which Sephiroth is fighting on top of an exact duplicate of that cannon inside of a hologram chamber. Comparing these guys to the cannon let me figure out the diameter of the inner barrel, and the diameter of the inner barrel is about equal to the diameter of the laser that it fires, which overall resulted in me finding that the laser this cannon fired is approximately 16.625 meters wide. With that found, I compared the laser to the diamond weapon and discovered that this monster stands almost exactly 100 meters tall. With that measurement found, I then proceeded to roughly measure the volume of the diamond weapon's body. And I found that its body has an approximate volume of around 112,444.5 meters cubed. Now comes the tricky part. We have no way of knowing for certain what the diamond weapon's density is, and we need the density to find its weight. That said, we can make an educated guess based off of the information available. The diamond weapon is a member of a class of monsters known as weapons, and weapons are at least partially biological in nature, and the diamond weapon is humanoid in shape, so we could assume it is the density of a human. However, it's also called the Diamond Weapon, and it was literally birthed from the planet, so we could instead assume it has the density of diamond. But then again, the weapons are also at least partially metallic in nature, so we could also assume that it has the density of a metal like iron. All that said, if we're being realistic, the Diamond Weapon is likely some mixture of biological material, diamond, and metal. So for the sake of simplicity, and for the sake of neither highballing nor lowballing, I'm just going to assume it's one third biological, one third diamond, and one third iron. Having done that, we find the average approximate weight of the diamond weapon is about 463 million kilograms, or 510,000 US tons. Now let's talk about the actual limit break. This limit has two parts. The first part has Tifa grab the diamond weapon and leap about 12 meters into the air. The second part has her throw the diamond weapon downwards into the ground. Now the first part of this is actually the less impressive part, but I went ahead and calculated it anyway. In order to leap into the air at this speed while carrying the diamond weapon, Tifa would have to be outputting over 33 billion newtons of force. That's equivalent to her bench pressing over 3 billion kilograms, or over 3.8 million US tons. In terms of kinetic energy, she's outputting over 175 billion joules, which is just shy of 42 tons of TNT. More than enough to level several city blocks. But it's when we talk about the second part of this limit break that the numbers get crazy. 
You see, when Tifa throws the diamond weapon downwards, she throws it at such high speeds that a cone of fire forms around it. This is the effect you see around spaceships when they re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. In order to figure out how fast the diamond weapon would have to be flying in order to create this effect, I did some research. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the exact speed it would have to be going, but I can tell you the minimum speed it would have to be going. These fire cones are formed not through friction, but through compression. When a high-speed object like a jet or a space shuttle slams into the atmosphere, it pushes the air forward so quickly that the air molecules don't have time to get out of the way, causing them to compress and ignite. This creates the fiery cone. The main takeaway you need to understand about this is that this sort of compression can only occur when an object is moving faster than the speed of sound. As such, the bare minimum speed the diamond weapon must be moving is Mach 1, or 767 miles per hour. Understand, this is a huge lowball. In reality, all evidence indicates that forming a fire cone like this will require hypersonic speeds exceeding Mach 5. But I don't want to accidentally oversell this feat with faulty physics, and this is rocket science, which I don't understand fully. So I'm just going to use the minimum speed so as to keep this accurate. That said, from this moment on, know that any numbers I come up with are actually the bare minimum, and Tifa is likely far stronger. With this velocity found, we can plug that into the kinetic energy formula along with the diamond weapon's mass, and we find that Tifa is outputting over 27 trillion joules of energy, which is equivalent to over 6.5 kilotons of TNT. That's enough power to level a small town. In terms of force, that's equivalent to Tifa lifting over 1.6 trillion kilograms or 1.8 billion US tons. Of course, as I'm sure you're all thinking, this was accomplished with her limit break, not her normal strength. But calculating her normal strength is quite simple. As mentioned earlier, the Meteor Strike Limit Break enhances Tifa's strength by a factor of 1.875. So, if we simply divide these results by 1.875, we find that even in base form, with no strength enhancements, Tifa is still strong enough to strike with energy equivalent to 3.5 kilotons of TNT, which is equivalent to her bench pressing 977 million US tons. So even in base form, Tifa is still powerful enough to destroy a small town with one attack. But we're not done yet. You Tifa fans out there probably already know, but the Meteor Strike is not Tifa's strongest limit break. Her strongest limit break is the Final Heaven, in which Tifa delivers a single super-powered punch so intense that it creates a massive explosion. And whereas the Meteor Strike limit enhances Tifa's strength by a factor of 1.875, the Final Heaven enhances her strength by a factor of 2.625. And since we now know how strong Tifa is in base form, we can multiply these numbers by 2.625 to find that the final heaven, Tifa's strongest attack, strikes with energy equivalent to 9.1 kilotons of TNT. That's nearly atomic bomb levels of power. But we're still not done! You see, unlike other Final Fantasy VII characters, Tifa doesn't just use one limit break at a time. She uses all seven in a row. So you get hit with Meteor Strike, Final Heaven, and five other limit breaks back to back to back. And since we know Tifa's strength in base form, and since we know how much each limit break multiplies her strength, we can easily calculate just how much energy Tifa unleashes into her opponent when she bombards them with all seven limit breaks. In total, getting hit by all seven of Tifa's limit breaks is equivalent to getting hit with 41.7 kilotons of TNT. For context, the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima was only equal to 15 kilotons. That means getting hit by Tifa's limit break combo is like getting hit with 2.78 atomic bombs to the face. But we're still not done. You see, Tifa's limits have a unique mechanic where they each have a chance of dealing double damage. As such, if Tifa lands all seven of her limit breaks and doubles the damage on all of them, then she would be outputting a whopping 83.3 kilotons of TNT. That's equal to 5.5 atomic bombs. Tifa's arms are weapons of mass destruction. And you know what's even crazier? It took Tifa working together with eight other similarly powerful heroes to defeat this guy. 
I'll leave you with that terrifying thought and catch you all in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. Sorry it took me so long to make this, but I've been busy and tired and like I said, I kind of ran out of passion for this particular uh, video. Um, but the math is all legit. I've gone over it multiple times uh, and I think it's pretty fun. Uh, in case anyone was wondering, uh, this has nothing to do with Death Battle. I'm not trying to prove or disprove anything. I'm just doing this so that way Tifa fans can be proud of their waifu. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if there's any other feats that you would like to see me analyze. And hey, who knows? Maybe they'll be the topic of my next video. In the meantime, uh, thank you all for watching. I, I had a lot of fun writing or doing the math for this video. I don't have fun editing. Editing sucks. But I had fun with the math. And I hope you guys did too. With all that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and sign out. Like if you enjoyed the video. Comment if you got something to say. Subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, have a fantastic day.